I was surprised with how much I really liked uh, Julian Castro's perspectives on things. Julian Castro kind of took a moment to really stand out, especially with Elios Trump. <laughs> like I thought Julian Castro got a lot of great points out that I think I hadn't saw people talking much about. Actually, Julian Castro, I thought, had the strongest surprise moments for me. All right, some reaction last night. That was voters in New Hampshire at a watch party reacting to our next guest's performance at the Democratic debate last night. Joining us now, former Secretary of Housing and Urban Development under President Obama, former mayor of San Antonio and contender for the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination, Julian Castro, you had a great night last night. Fun to watch. Yeah. One of those interviews in New Hampshire, just a random state we picked out, by the way, <laughs> said something that I think yeah. really focused on the key to your performance out last night, and that was what we've been talking about for a year now. Who is the person who, when you have Donald Trump standing on one side of the stage and the Democrat on the other side of the stage, who can stand up to Donald Trump? And I think a lot of people saw your performance last night and said, maybe that guy. Yeah, no, I think a lot of people were surprised. You know, I haven't gotten as much coverage uh, so far in the campaign, uh, but I've been traveling, I think, to 20 states already. And last night, what people saw was that I have a strong vision for the country, uh, that I have the right experience to be president. Uh, and they want to know, look, can you stand up to Donald Trump? And I showed that I can more than handle myself. So I think that uh, people are looking at me a new way today. Eddie. Yeah. So you made a distinction. You said you're not for reproductive rights, but reproductive justice. What does that mean in its details? And just as a footnote, as you asked that question, thank you so much for lifting up Oscar and Valeria last night. Right? It was really important to hit that question in the way you did. But talk about a bit what you mean by the phrase re reproductive justice. What I mean is that I want to make sure that uh, no matter how much uh, money a, uh, a woman or, and I mentioned uh, yesterday, trans man, also, someone who can have an abortion, no matter how much money they have, that they're able to exercise their right to get an abortion. And so it's not just about reproductive freedom, it's also about reproductive justice. So for instance, to be specific, uh, I would do away with the Hyde Amendment. Uh, I believe that it's time to make sure that everybody can exercise that right. So you went after Beto a little bit last night. What was that about? Plan, strategic, or just happened? Uh, well, I mean, I would be lying if I said that uh, I hadn't thought about the issue before. Uh, he and I have a disagreement about immigration. And, you know, watching the image of, uh, of Oscar, Oscar and Valeria the day before mm -hmm. moved me like I'm sure it moved a lot of people. It doesn't matter whether you're liberal or conservative or where you're from in the country. I mean, watching that father yeah. there with his little girl uh, touched me a lot. And so if I was uh, extra animated last night, it's because I was feeling what a lot of people are feeling, that we have to make sure that this cruelty from the administration stops. And my point, you know, I brought up Section 1325 of the Immigration and Nationality Act, and some people might say, oh, what in the world? You're getting so specific and technical, but no. This is the exact law that has allowed this administration to incarcerate the parents and then separate them from children. And I called for the elimination of it, the termination of it, repeal of it. Uh, and Senator Warren, Senator Booker, you heard Congressman Ryan last night, uh, also Governor Inslee have followed my lead in calling for that. For some reason, uh, Congressman O'Rourke has not. Uh, and I just wanted to point out that if you're not calling for the repeal of that section, that means that uh, basically you're going to keep the status quo and you're going to allow family separation. Adrian. Secretary, you have been in the race. Um, you were one of the first candidates to announce for president, and you've been in the race for a while. You've also been one of the first candidates to really unveil a lot of policy. You've really led on a lot of policy issues, but you haven't gotten a lot of attention. Why do you think that is? Until, <laughs> until last a, night, really. Yeah, I, you know, I haven't. I haven't gotten as much attention as a lot of other people have. Uh, these things are weird, but uh, y'all know. I mean, campaigns also, they have this life cycle. 
right? And I've said the whole time since I announced on January 12th that I don't want to be a flash in the pan candidate. I wanted to build a strong campaign little by little. We still have seven months to go mm -hmm. until Iowa caucuses. So it doesn't matter to me um, what the polls say right now. It matters what they say on February 3rd and beyond that. And what we see is that I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Back to Mika's question just for a moment. She asked specifically about Beto O'Rourke. A lot of people surprised that you all didn't go more directly at Joe Biden, the clear front runner, or even Elizabeth Warren, the front runner on the stage last night. Strategically for you, what was it about Beto O'Rourke that you looked directly at him and criticized him? Why did you want to go after him? Well, because we had this disagreement on the most important aspect of immigration policy that would make sure, guarantee that we end family separations. And that's why I wanted to make clear, not just for Bethel, but as you recall, I challenged every other candidate in this race to join me in calling for the repeal of Section 1325. You know, Bethel was on stage last night. I will say, you know, when we're going through these debates, I think with the voter, it does make a difference as to whether somebody is on the stage with you or not. Because if you, if somebody is not on the stage with you, then people wonder, well, you know, why are you talking about somebody that's not on the stage? They're not there to defend themselves. And so I wanted to focus on the people that were there on the stage. Abby. So there's this debate going on in the party, and we saw it on the stage last night between the left and the right, right? Left in the center, not the left and the right, right? Where do you fit in this? Your, your HUD secretary, how do you, where do you stand on Medicare for all? Where do you stand for the Green New Deal? How, will, would, how do you position yourself in this ideological debate that's happening within the Democratic Party right now? Uh, well, look, yesterday they asked questions uh, about what we're going to do to combat climate change, about health care. Uh, I've said very clearly that I, I believe that Medicare should be there for everyone who wants it. But if somebody wants to have a supplemental private health insurance plan, that they should be allowed to keep it. Um, but I don't All right, think so we've been talking about this. And so if Donald Trump says to you when you're running against him in the general election or turns to you and says, you want Medicare for all, that means you're taking away Americans' right to go to their own doctor. What do you say to Donald Trump? Uh, I say that uh, that's That's false. a lie. Yeah, it's a lie. It's you false. can say that's a lie, right? It would be, and that wouldn't be the first time that he lied, would it? Uh, no. So um, I want to make sure, though, that nobody in this country ever goes without the health care they need right. when they need it. And I think we can devise a system that does both of those things. I like the concept of a Green New Deal. I know that we don't have to choose between protecting our planet on the one hand and also creating great jobs and opportunity on the other. When I was mayor of San Antonio, I was on the local public utility board. And we started moving away from coal-fired plants and instead uh, invested in solar energy and other renewables. And it created more, more than 800 jobs in the clean energy economy. That's the kind of thing I think that we can do in the United States and lead both in combating climate change and also creating good jobs and opportunity for people who need them. Final question. When are you going to get some sleep? Have I you know. slept yet? Yeah, I'm like overheating right now. Yeah, yeah my body's all out of uh, whack because I have not slept. I have yeah. not slept for one minute oh since last gosh. night. Oh well, my it, it's, it's had to be extraordinarily exciting for you. Congratulations. Yeah. A great Good night. See you. A breakout night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Uh, coming up, President Trump's detailed political analysis of last night's debate included just one word, boring. We'll talk about the president's response, but I have to say, I have to say, it has been so refreshing not to talk about Trump. We'll be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.